Hey everybody, how's it going? My name's Ethan with June 1st, and today I'm doing a little bit of a different style of video. Normally I do very scripted and well-edited type videos that go into, you know, a lot of detail and are very curated, I guess you could say, but this is a very important topic uh, given the relevance of it right now and conversations that I had today and the whole nine. Uh, I felt like I needed to make this video and discuss the forecast cone, which is used for hurricanes. As of today, October 5th, 2022, Hurricane Ian made landfall one week ago in the southwestern Florida Peninsula. And as of in making this video, there have been 115 confirmed fatalities associated with the storm, the vast majority of which have been in southwestern Florida though there were landfalls in Western Cuba as well as South Carolina. My heart goes out to those that were directly affected by this storm. It pains me every single time that we have a hurricane of this magnitude make landfall and it claims lives. And the issue that I'm about to bring up might have caused lives to have been lost. So what spurred me to make this video today was a Washington Post article that was brought to my attention by Gabe Cox of the Tornado Trackers. And I'll pull it up right here, uh, but the title is Cone of Confusion, Why Some Say Iconic Hurricane Map Misled Floridians. And it's a good article, and it goes into the perception of the forecast cone, which is something that I've thought a lot about a lot, uh, but now they did a study for this article. You know, they talked to a few thousand people, I guess. I'm not really quite sure how they conducted the study, but I guess the premise is that they, they got input from a couple thousand people and essentially asked them how they interpreted the forecast cone. What is alarming to me is that 50%, roughly 50% of people in the general public completely misinterpret what the forecast cone means. So let's get into the forecast cone itself and what it does mean and kind of break down the misconception. So this is the National Hurricane Center's website and they have a clear cut definition on what the forecast cone is. So let's dive right into it. The cone represents the probable track of the center of a tropical cyclone and is formed by enclosing the area swept out by a set of circles along the forecast track. And they do that at different time intervals. The size of each circle is set so that two thirds of historical official forecast errors over a five year sample fall within the circle. The circle radii defining the cones in 2022 for the Atlantic Eastern North Pacific and Central North Pacific basins are given in the table below. And this table here gives you the, the radius in terms of nautical miles for each hour. So, you know, uh, looking for the Atlantic Basin, for example, at 36 hours, the circle that they draw out has a radius of 52 miles. And basically how they derive that is accuracy based on five years of historical data for tropical cyclones that they've done. So over time, it gets more and more accurate as forecasts get better, right? Uh, but there's still going to be lots of uncertainty. Uh, and that's the nature of forecasting weather. We're dealing with the largest fluid dynamics problem and thermodynamics problem in the world. Trying to model the atmosphere when there's so many complexities when it comes to it. And it's such a complex science. And that's why the weather is not always right. But these forecast cones have gotten really good but they're not perfect. And the graphic itself is not perfect. Now let's get into uh, this sentence here. Based on forecasts over the previous five years, the entire track of the tropical cyclone can be expected to remain within the cone roughly 60 to 70% of the time. So the important idea that we have to get all out of this is that the cone itself represents the range of which the center of the hurricane is most likely to go. So roughly 70% of the time, the center of the hurricane is going to fall somewhere within that cone. This brings me back to Hurricane Ian. At the crucial evacuation point, uh, you know, that couple day time frame before the storm, you know, three to four days, 
you know, two to three even, you have to evacuate, especially when a major hurricane is going to be making landfall. So essentially, at the time of this crucial time frame, the hurricane's moving over Western Cuba and into the Gulf of Mexico, and the forecast cone is directly centered over Tampa. So, you know, you have your cone, Tampa's smack dab in the middle of it. So the public perception was, and the error that most people run into, is that the cone is the effects of the hurricane. So it's saying that the center is going to be Tampa. The incorrect way of thinking about it. So instead, as we've now gone over this defini definition, is that the hurricane is going to be somewhere within those lines in terms of where the center of the hurricane is going to be, where that eye is going to track. So if we look at this cone from you know this crucial evacuation time frame, the eventual landfall location, Fort Myers, Florida, is on the right edge of the forecast cone. So this leads to this misconception where everyone's staring at Tampa because it's dead center in the cone. People on the extremities of this cone are thinking to themselves, you know, people that aren't necessarily, uh, you know, they're just seeing, you know, these graphics that are being displayed by news agencies since the National Weather Service and the National Hurricane Center are public entities. Their data is basically used for these other graphics by other news agencies, and they're just putting up the raw forecast cone. And if we look at the National Hurricane Center, right? We scroll down to their graphics. So here's an example graphic from Hurricane Laura. There's a big note at the top. Note, the cone contains the probable path of the storm center, but does not show the size of the storm. Hazardous conditions can occur outside of the cone. Basically what they're saying here is that they're showing the range of which the center can be, and that there's likely going to be impacts outside of this cone. And as we already established, the center oftentimes may not be, you know, they're roughly 30% may not be within this cone. This leads to this issue, right? Where people are thinking in terms of this swath of effects. So if you're on the outer limit of the effects, you're probably going to be okay. If you stayed in Fort Myers, you took the brunt of a extremely powerful category four hurricane on the cusp of a category five. So, where does that lead me to? This leads me to the issue of the graphic itself. So now that we've established that there's a misinterpretation of this graphic, that kind of defeats the purpose of a graphic. Because like I said, you have all these news agencies that are displaying their own versions of the graphic, right? Because the National Hurricane Center and the National Weather Service are public entities, so all of their map data is publicly available. It's a government entity, that's what you do when you're a government entity, it's a service to the people. So you have the private companies, you know, your news agencies that are taking that map data and making their own versions of the graphic, but they're not including that big note at the top or elaborating because it's a, you know, a 30 second news hit or whatever. They're not elaborating that how this cone works. And that's no fault to them because the point of a graphic is that you're supposed to look at it quick and get all the information you need. And clearly you're not getting all the information you need because 50% of the people cannot interpret it correctly. So it fails as a graphic. This is where the crucial intersection of social sciences and the meteorology field are needed because you know, you have like communication professionals that are trying to get out information and you have meteorologists that are making these forecasts and there has to be this crucial link between the two. So if we can better understand how people perceive these graphics, then we can take our forecasts, make a useful graphic, and then disseminate the information from said graphic efficiently. In the case of Hurricane Ian, for example, we would likely have less fatalities if evacuations took place because of the interpretation of the graphic. I'm not sure what officials were thinking uh, in Lee County, Florida, but nonetheless, whether they're evacuation orders or not, people that are getting this information should be able to interpret the fact that, oh, we are within the cone, 
of a major hurricane. The center is somewhere within that cone 70% of the time. And if you're in that cone, you might be getting hit. So being on the edge of the cone versus the center of the cone are essentially the same probable area in terms of where you're going to get hit. Yes and no, but at the end of the day, if you're in the cone, you have reason to be concerned. And if you are on just outside of the cone, there's reasons to have concern. So at the end of the day, this graphic is failing at what it's doing. It's not getting that crucial information out there of where the eye is going to potentially track because people are misinterpreting it and thinking that's just the extent of where the wind damage is going to be, for example. So if you're on the outer edge of that cone, you're going to be safe, but you're not, simply put. So there needs to be a concerted effort from people like psychologists that can you know, break down how people interpret these graphics and you have graphic designers and communications people and meteorologists. There has to be this cohesive working environment where all of these groups work together in order to deliver a product that can be clearly interpreted and say that, okay, this is where the eye could potentially be. I'm not sure what it's going to look like. Maybe it looks something like a hybrid spaghetti model with a forecast cone. I'm not quite sure, but the forecast cone as it stands is flawed. And unfortunately, Hurricane Ian is now a case of that. So before the next major hurricane makes landfall in the United States, I personally think that there needs to be a reevaluation of our main communication tool in terms of hurricane threats. My heart goes out to those that have been directly affected by Hurricane Ian. As I mentioned before, it, it pains me every single time that we have a major hurricane like this. Every time I watch the radar of it making landfall, I know that people are experiencing the worst day of their lives in that moment, and others are dying because of this hurricane. And we need to do a better job of disseminating this information to the general public as it stands. I hope that you got something out of this video, either if you're a weather person or if you're someone that doesn't really know too much about the weather and just Googled forecast cone, because maybe watching this video, you maybe learned a little bit about the forecast cone and hopefully that benefits you in the future. But I think there should be a major overhaul of how this cone is drawn up because it's failing to do its job right now. Let me know what you think in the comments about the forecast cone. And once again, my heart goes out to those that have been affected by Hurricane Ian.